Celebrating 46 years on the air, Award-Winning Farm Week is a production of Mississippi State University Extension. Today on Farm Week, an encore trip down Candy Cane Memory Lane, a Farm Week story from the turn of the millennia. In Southern Gardening, legendary in the landscape, snappy flowers in a ton of color. Plus another look back, Zach's off the highway where everything is worthy. And finally, years later, Zach's back at that tree farm. This time he's branching out. Farm Week starts right now. Hello everyone, I'm Zach Ashmore. And I'm Mike Russell. Great to have you with us again here on Farm Week. Merry Christmas. At this time of year, it's always nice to reminisce, so we're going to take that trip down Candy Cane Memory Lane that we promised you a couple of weeks ago. The story you're about to watch originally aired on December 7th, 2000. It was produced by none other than our own Brian Utley. Brian was a Farm Week reporter in those days, and he's still with us at MSU Extension, still using his skills to shoot and edit stories just for you. This one was one of his earlier efforts. Enjoy. Traditions play an important role for many people during the holiday season, whether it's shopping on the day after Thanksgiving or placing Christmas presents under the tree. Each year, thousands of Mississippians followed the tradition of selecting a Christmas tree for their home. The search takes many of them to tree farms like Old McDaniel Christmas Tree Farm in McAdams. Tommy and Jonell McDaniel manage 10 acres of land with approximately 8,000 Carolina Sapphire, Leyland Cypress, and Virginia Pine Christmas trees. Jonell says that no matter which tree a customer chooses to have cut down, they can be sure of how well it's been taken care of. When we walk, you walk up to the Christmas tree, we want somebody to really like this Christmas tree so we work all year to make every tree look the very best that it can. To further ensure satisfaction each tree is shaken out to remove any loose needles and trim to the exact specification of each customer. Although they work all year long their success is measured during the four-week period after Thanksgiving. Tommy McDaniel says the job takes the patience and determination of a farmer. A Christmas tree farmer has to be, or just like any other farmer, it has to be something they love. If you love it, you can stay with it and enjoy it and, and make money. But if uh, you've got to really be dedicated. Of course, buying a Christmas tree is just the first step. The fun part is getting to decorate it. For that, we visit Noah's Art in Jackson to take a look at their hand-painted decorative Christmas balls. John and Leanne Brandon run the business out of their home, offering a variety of painted ornaments and handmade ceramic dinnerware. They're in their busiest time of year with Leanne painting new ornaments each day to fill their holiday orders. Right now it'll make or break your year uh, because that's the bulk of what we do. Uh, from August to December 24th, we're pretty busy around here. The Brandons hope that by starting collector's editions, like the Excelsius Birth Collection, customers will come back for new ornaments each year. It has the baby Jesus and the gifts that were brought. Then we have Mary and Joseph in the stable. We have another one of the shepherds with the sheep with the star. And then we have the heralding angel, which foretells the story to the shepherds. Making the transition from a seasonal business to a year-round one will depend heavily on her husband, John. In his job with the Mississippi Development Authority, he helps people start small businesses. Part of the, the fun of this is what I preach at work doesn't really work at home. So we've tried to apply the things that we talk to small businesses about across the state, and certainly we use every available resource that's out there. Our last stop is also in Jackson for another holiday favorite, chocolate candy. Nandy's Candy offers an assortment of fine chocolate truffles, divinity, fudge, and much more. Nancy King says her business kicks into a higher gear during any holiday season, but especially Christmas time, which accounts for about a third of her income. In the last oh, month, I've probably worked six to seven days a week uh, because we're getting ready and we're gearing up. And people are like, well, what about your life? Well, when you're in season, I don't have a life. My life is Nandy's Candy. Where Noah's Art is a relatively new business, Nandy's Candy has been in business for 20 years. King attributes some of her success to the high quality grade of chocolate she uses to make her candy. She has also appreciated sound business advice along the way, like that from Virgil Culver at the Extension Services Food and Fiber Center at Mississippi State University. 
she pretty well knew what she wanted to do, the direction she was moving in, as do many of the special food companies that we work with. And periodically, they just need someone to sit down that has a completely objective perspective to say, am I headed in the right direction? You know, what do you think about this? And to bounce some ideas off and get some recommendations. Each of these three businesses are steeped in holiday tradition and enjoy getting to be a part of someone else's Christmas. It puts you in this, the feel of the holiday, um, the tradition of candy, the tradition of the sugar plums, whether it's in the you know, nursery rhymes or whatever. It's just an integral part of Christmas. It's a happy time. People that come to out here are all happy. They're looking for some, that perfect tree, and everybody has a different perfect tree. I really find myself as I paint the balls thinking, oh, I wonder whose Christmas tree this is going to be on. Or it's kind of neat to think that something you create is going to be a part of somebody else's celebration. From Jackson, I'm Brian Utley reporting. There's always room for Southern Gardening. This week, a fun little segment about snappy flowers that are vibrant and eye-catching. Thanks to our new host, Dr. Eddie Smith. Here's Eddie. Today, Southern Gardening is at the Flower Bed Nursery in Lumberton, Mississippi, admiring some beautiful snaptastic snapdragons. Annual snapdragons love the cold fall, winter, and spring weather and come in a wide array of colors. Their colorful flower spikes are sure to brighten up any landscape. Snaptastic red snapdragons are an absolute marvel to behold. These gorgeous plants flaunt a vibrant, eye-catching appearance thanks to their deep red petals that form the perfect contrast with their yellow centers. Snaptastic yellow snapdragons will definitely catch the eye of anyone who passes by with their bright yellow flower petals. The intense yellow color stands out against the backdrop of dark green foliage. Snaptastic pink snapdragons boast delicate pink flowers with yellow centers. The contrasting yellow centers adds to the beauty of these gorgeous plants. My absolute favorite snaptastic snapdragon is orange flame. Snaptastic orange flame has a fiery burst of orange flowers, each one edged with a bright yellow flame of color. It truly is a stunning sight to see. All of these snapdragons usually grow up to 12 to 18 inches high and thrive in areas that receive full sun to partial shade. They are all incredibly easy to care for, making them a low maintenance option for gardeners of all skill levels. Whether you are trying to add a pop of color to your landscape or a unique focal point, Snaptastic Snapdragons are the perfect choice. I'm Eddie Smith and I will see you next time on Southern Gardening. We'll take a quick break, but don't go away. Coming up, we have visited the worthy Christmas tree in Amory. A look back. Now Zach flashes forward with another trip back to the farm. Before you can decorate it, light it up, or stash presents under it, you've got to find your Christmas tree. Zach heads back to Amory and just like before, boy, are those beauties worthy. Go behind the scenes where traditions are still being born. That's coming up on Farmway. Don't go away. I believe in people and their hopes, their aspirations and their faith. I believe in my own work and in the opportunity I have to make my life useful to humanity. I believe that education is a lifelong process and the greatest university is the home. That my success as a teacher is proportional to those qualities of mind and spirit that give me welcome entrance to the homes of the families that I serve. Because I believe these things, I am an extension professional.
believe in people and their hopes, their aspirations and their faith. I believed that education, of which extension work is an essential part, is basic in stimulating individual initiative, self-determination and leadership. I believe that these are the keys to democracy and that people, when given facts they understand, will act not only in their self-interest but also in the interest of society. I believe in intellectual freedom to search for and present the truth without bias and with courteous tolerance towards the views of others. Because I believe these things, I am an extension professional. Now for a little more fun looking back while we get off the highway at the same time. Christmas just weeks away, but it wouldn't be a Feliz Navidad without the perfect tree. But where to get one and how do they grow them? Here's Zach with all of the answers and just a little bit more. Welcome to Off the Highway, a show where we explore hidden gems all across the state of Mississippi that you ought to know about. I'm your host, Zach Ashmore, and today we're headed to the Worthy Christmas Tree Farms outside of Amory, Mississippi. Come on and join me. Welcome to Worthy Christmas Tree Farm, a few miles outside of Amory in Monroe County, Mississippi. This place is one of many agritourism locations across the state. Let's go check it out. Christmas Tree Farms are a good way to help you get into the spirit of the season. Picking out the perfect tree while it's still in the ground might be one of the oldest traditions there is. Mr. Lowell Worthy's been co-owner of the farm since the beginning. There were some friends of ours uh, that had uh, you know, opened a farm originally, and so we started, uh, which I started working for them when I was probably 14, 13 years old, and then once they decided to retire, uh, they asked my family if we would like to kind of take it over. So we started uh, planting our trees here uh, like, you know, five years prior to, to their retirement, and that way we could be ready. So once they closed in 2010, uh, we opened our farm in 2011. Of all the varieties of tree they grow out here, the two most common are Leland Cypress and Murray Cypress. And as you can see, they grow them nice and big. The farm also imports Fraser firs from North Carolina to sell as pre-cut trees. One of the interesting things I learned here was that Christmas tree farms tend to work together. We have the Southern Christmas Tree Association, and it actually uh, compelled of say Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. And so we have three states that's kind of in our convention, and all of us share our information, and we try to help each other. Uh, if someone moving into an area, they'll you know send uh, you know folks to me, or you know I do the same way. If you're like me and have never gotten a Christmas tree straight from the farm, they like to make it easy for you with a simple process. They give you a tag to place on the tree, which reserves it for you. Then you tear off the bottom of the tag and return it to them. They'll get you your tree and deliver it to your car. While you're waiting for your tree, the farm has plenty of family-friendly activities. They even have Charlie Brown. Good grief. It takes a while to process the trees and you know go out to the fields and you know pick them out and, and cut them down and bring them up. So yes, we do have like an area like for jumpies, things like that for the kids to play on. We have some swings for the parents to sit. Uh, we have some, some uh, you know, horses to feed and a lot of things that the kids can do kind of while we wait and, and that's what we try to do to kind of have a way to kind of pass the time. Christmas is not the only holiday they celebrate on the farm. Prior, they have a corn maze and pumpkin patch. The business of agritourism doesn't apply to just one season. The same thing goes for raising Christmas trees. Growing time varies based on how big you want it to be. We start planting uh, just right after that we, you know, cut the last tree, we start planting for the next year. You know, we have to fertilize, we have to put out, we have to plant the trees in, you know, February and March. Uh, every tree has to be shaped twice a year. Uh, we have to worry about, uh, you know, fungus, insects. Christmas tree farming is a year-round business. It's going to take a few years for this little guy to grow to size. You're going to be great. I know it. When they first started the farm, Mr. Worthy needed some advice on how to ensure healthy growth of the trees. He reached out to the Extension Service, and they were there for him. The, uh, the local guy does come out here some. He's a friend of mine. 
and uh, you know they try to uh, help us with different things. Uh, they have an app that uh, you know he showed me this past year that you can actually tell the uh, soil uh, around your trees. So you know, uh, you know he helped me a lot, kind of showing me the places that, that I could work on with fertilizing things like that. The farm has another feature: a gift shop and event area. Many farms across the state have begun doing this to take advantage of the rural beauty of their surroundings. People like being able to soak in the charming countryside. This is Sparky. He's sort of the unofficial mascot of the place. He's the first thing you see when you walk into the gift shop. It's his job to sit here and make you feel welcome. And you most certainly did. You made me feel very special. You might have noticed that the tree behind me looked like it had been snowed on. It's not a fake. That tree was grown at the farm and they used a process called flocking to give it that appearance. Flocking is kind of a, a wood base a powder and so we mix that with water and so that actually sticks to the trees. So it looks like a heavy snowfall once we get done with it. I should point out that flocking is a biodegradable process. The flakes are wood based and the adhesive dissolves in water. They told me that if you left the tree out in the rain, the flocking would melt away. The shop showcases not only what the farm can do, but what other crafters within the local community can make too. The gift shop is a prime example of a community pulling their skills together to create something truly special. Like this candle, which was made by a local lady out of Amory, Mississippi. <sighs> Seriously, that candle smelled awesome. You know, I found this particular farm online through mschristmastrees.com and through visitmississippi.org. These are great resources to help you find unique places to visit across the state. When it comes to visiting Christmas tree farms, you'll find they have plenty of traditions. Christmas tree farms are kind of made of, of you know, traditions and things like that. Um, the, uh, the families do the same thing kind of every year. They go and you know, they eat at a certain restaurant kind of while they're coming and then got a certain way they do things every year. So that's kind of special when a you know, family can come out and, and spend time together and uh, you know, I'm glad to be a part of that. Worthy Christmas Tree Farm is one of many Christmas tree farms all across the state of Mississippi. You ought to look online to find one close to you. Well, that's it for this week. But if you know of any places I ought to know about that are off the highway, send me a line. Who knows? Maybe next time I'll be off the highway in your hometown. Until then, take care. And now, flash forward a few years as I head back to that tree farm in Amory, this time to get a little more insight into what makes a Christmas tree farm tick. All that while reveling in the spirit of the season. If you've never handpicked a Christmas tree, come with me. There's more than meets the eye, and here's a hint, it's not just about the tree. This time of year certainly has a magical feeling. With cold weather setting in, thoughts go towards family and tradition. One of the oldest is the Christmas tree. These beautiful decorations have their own unique history, but who grows them? Why do they do it? And what does the Christmas tree business look like? To find out, I went to a local Christmas tree farm in Amory, Mississippi, Worthy Tree Farm. So it takes about five years to really get into the business. So uh, David and Vera Gray uh, had the Christmas tree farm right up the road, uh, started in the uh, early 80s. And so I used to work for him when I was like in high school. And so then when uh, they decided to retire, we uh, took over the business in uh, 2010. Your process is we have to start like in January of going out to the fields and uh, it's called propagation. So we actually take cuttings off the trees, and so those cuttings are rooted for the next year's trees. So that's kind of year, I guess, one in the greenhouse. A year two is when you actually plant that particular tree in your field. And so there's like basil pruning, all kind of different prunings that you have to do to get that tree ready, established, and all that. And then after that, you have to shear the trees twice a year. You got to spray fungicide every 21 days. It's a lot to it just in that between uh, like the year two and year five, you know, to kind of keep them growing and, and you know, fertilize them. Uh, we spray fertilizer on them to keep them growing. Uh, we grow the Murray Cypress and Leland Cypress and the Carolina Sapphire. 
and the green giant is what our uh, three or four uh, different types are. Our Christmas trees that we grow now are, were started as ornamental purposes like landscape break-ins, you know, wind breaks, all that kind of stuff. And uh, before that, they were growing pine trees, Virginia pine, Scotch pine, that we grew here at the farm. And they uh, moved to Leland Cypress due to disease purposes because the tip moth would get on the uh, pine trees. And they moved to these ornamental trees, and they kind of like the cedar tree. And they moved to those, and that you know they they blew up when people started growing them. Everybody started growing them. It was easier to grow than a pine tree, because on pine trees, if you planted a thousand, you lost five hundred as Christmas trees. So they wanted to move to something that was more sure. If you planted a thousand, you at least got eight hundred. It's not something many people would think about. Christmas tree farmers are like many other tree farmers across the state and the U.S. They face similar problems to those who grow pine trees or decorative ornamentals. Technically, that's exactly what the Christmas tree is, an ornamental. Although they don't hang over your head like a forest of pine, the Christmas tree business is a serious thing. Here in the southeast, they have associations where growers can give and get advice. We have like uh, three or four states uh, are kind of involved into the Southern Christmas Tree uh, Association here. And so we have uh, like our own little uh, community that we can kind of, if we're needing help, any guidance or anything, we have people that can help us there. So uh, once a year we all get together at either uh, uh, Louisiana, Alabama, or Mississippi, kind of one place or another and we all get together and just have it like a big convention. Uh, and so we kind of pick each other's brain, you know, if we're having trouble uh, with something or like that, we can always ask. Cause we have some older growers you know, in our association, so and they've been there and done that. You know, they really know, you know, what to do and, and what not to do. We, we try to help each other out because you don't want to see anybody struggling on something like that. So that, that association is a wonderful thing, we think. You know, what's happened, we'll send a picture of one of our trees and say, have you ever had this happen to your tree before? And they'll say, yeah, it's this. So we can correct that. Or they may call us about, you know, one of something happened to their tree. And we'll say, well, this happened, it happened to ours a couple years ago. So it's just a, it's a network of making it easy for everybody. You know, mistakes were made, I can tell you, don't do that or do this. You'd think tree farmers would be in stiff competition with each other, but in truth, there's enough business to go around. There's a few up here up in the north part of the state, but you know, you can't, you know, if there's 10,000 people in an area, you can't sell that many. So you're glad that somebody further on down the road, you know, an hour from us can open one because then that kind of helps them out over there. And that's the main thing is just kind of uh, in growers helping growers and we always encourage if anybody is you know wanting to get into the association or into you know, growing trees you know it's always a good idea you know to have an association that you're part of because there's no way for you to just start on day one and say hey I want to be a Christmas tree farmer because there's so many things on you know what to do and what not to do. Several years ago, I came out here to do another segment for Farm Week. At that time, this guy was super little. Now look how big he's gotten. You're just the biggest, prettiest tree. However, selling trees once a year is not enough to keep a farm afloat. So, like many others these days, Worthy Tree Farms has gotten into the business of agritourism. Uh, we do like a, a you know, pumpkin patch starts in October, so we kind of raise some of our pumpkins and all that. But we have you know birthday parties, we you know have gift shops, we have concession stands, we have some goats that the you know that the children can you know feed and, and, and you know pet. We have uh, you know sleigh rides during the Christmas season out in the fields, so it's kind of like an experience. Even in October and Christmas, it's an experience you know that you know, we try to have you know family first, and uh, that they can come out and just kind of experience you know time with their family and just have a good time. You know, so that, that's what it's all about. One of the most important aspects of agritourism is bringing the community itself together. Establishing a local gift shop like this one is a good way to do that because here they can sell local goods and services by the community. Just little by little, Wes wants to offer more stuff just to, you know, when you go out there and pick your tree out, it might take a little while for us to go cut it. You know, we might have, you know, 20 or so people waiting on, the, on a tree. So we thought, well, if we had this for them to wait, you know, that would help them not have just a a boring weight, so we started building concession stands and buildings to set in party rooms, and uh, it seems to be working. We got jumpies and all kind of fun stuff just to add to it. 
But yeah, it's always about family. You know, I, I always preach that. And, you know, everybody is, you know, so busy these days. So it's always kind of good to spend a couple of days with your family. And this is, you know, one of the days that I like, you know, to be able to kind of share our farm with. It's no secret that people in the Christmas tree business take special care of the traditions in the event of a family picking out the perfect tree for themselves. It's good to know that those who grow the trees truly care. Merry Christmas. Wonderful. Looks like you had a good time shooting that story, still hugging trees. That's right. I learned from <laughs> former Southern Gardening producer Tim Allison. Hey, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time on Farm Week, as we approach yet another new year, a trip back in time, simpler times for simple pleasures. We'll bring you a Farm Week feature first produced more than 20 years ago, and you'll meet Mr. George Berry, a woodcarver extraordinaire. Mr. Berry is gone now, but back then his carvings brought joy to the hearts of many, and he did it all the old-fashioned way with a pocket knife. That's next time on Farm Week. Remember, if you missed a story, look for past episodes of Farm Week on our website at farmweek.tv. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.